it was a, she gave it to me. She gave it to me covered in a fucking cream. And she said, something in it. And she's handing it to me. Like, I was like, oh, God, but this one is just like, so pissed at me for making her make it. She looked like it. You know, COVID. Yeah, and the other thing. The, the other thing, yeah. So, I've got to tell you about this thing that happened last weekend. Okay. All right, so, we uh, we spent a long weekend down in Hocking Hills in a cabin after we were invited to this uh, special performance event. Have you ever heard of the Moonville Tunnel? What? The Moonville Tunnel. The Moonville Tunnel? Could you speak up? Uh, we're in a bar. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know of it? The Moonville Tunnel? No, just louder, okay? Yeah. You always do that. It's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> it is really good to see you. So, Moonville Tunnel. Yeah, so the, the B&O Railroad used to run through this tunnel multiple times a day. Uh, it's, it's down near Athens, um, and they used to service all of these uh, mining communities down in southeast Ohio. But now, it's just this like abandoned overpass, right? Uh, you know, these overgrown woods around this big stone stone structure. The face of it has been like crazy graffitoed, um, graffiti <laughs> short. So there were uh, <laughs> there about a dozen of us, right? All gathered around the, the mouth of this tunnel right around dusk. Um, I, I didn't recognize any of the other people there, but from the way that they were dressed, I could tell that they were pretty successful people. Privileged people? Successful or privileged, sure. Were they all white? I hadn't noticed, but, uh, but yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're all kind of awkwardly standing around, you know, the mouth of this tunnel. It's, it's right around dusk, and we're, we're staring into the darkness, right? And then at the far end of the tunnel, this light starts to rise. And, um, you know, so we're all, we're all staring in, and this light rises, and then it's followed by a train whistle. Now, I know there's no train coming, right? But even so, the hairs on the back of my neck, they start to stand up. And I can hear some of the other people start to be like, oh, well, that's weird. But I decide, you know, I'm going in. You know, that's, yeah. So so I start walking forward. Kate with you? Yeah, yeah, Kate's with me. Of course she's with me. She, she's a few steps behind, actually. So she runs up, she grabs my hand, and we're, we're going in. I mean, that's why we're here, right? You know? So, and I can hear some of the other people start to be like, fuck that. I'm like, I'm not going in there. But, but like, we're already 10 feet in. That's why we're here, you know? And uh, it, it's kind of terrifying. You know, it's, it's dark and there's this like diffuse light ahead, but we can't even see our feet underneath us. We just hear the gravel kind of crunching underneath our shoes, you know? And so we're, we're walking forward and then I start to hear this like singing, like this, this song, you know, this kind of old timey, like bluegrass blues kind of song. Um, it went, uh, it, it went, break man Sam, poor break man Sam. He waved his lantern fast as he can, but the train done sped, and he lost his head. Poor Brakeman Sam. Yeah, right? It's uh, all, all these verses about this old <laughs> railway worker who, uh, he saw these kids playing on the tracks, and he waved his lantern to try and alert the audience, right? So, we're walking forward, you know, there's this song, and it's, it's dark, and there's this light, and the, the gravel starts to slip underneath our feet, you know, it's almost like we're we're walking on like a field of like old brittle bones, you know, how, how your brain kind of like fills in the gaps when there's nothing to see, and yeah. so we're, we're walking forward, and it's, it's dark, and I turn, and I look at Kate, and in the light that's reflecting off of her face, her eyes look like these just giant silver moons. And her, her mouth is pulled back in this terrifying, like impossibly wide grin. And, and I, when I looked at her, I felt my heart stop for a second, like literally felt it like skip a beat, you know? And she was like, so, so I dropped her hand, you know, and I, I, I'm going forward. And I, I heard her say my name, it was just so small, you know, but I'm, I'm going. So I'm walking forward and, and I get closer to the light and I see that it's actually not a light at all, but it is this reflection off of this floating human head 
just in midair in the tunnel. And I, I'm about 20 feet away, so I move forward and I reach for it. And as I do, these, these hands, these armless hands, come out of the darkness and they grab this head, this floating man's head. And then it all disappears. And then more light floods into the tunnel. And I see that there's this guy, and he's sitting in these these old, like tattered railway worker clothes, and he's playing um, uh, what was he? Uh, a mandolin. And then uh, there's this woman in a petticoat, and she's playing a fiddle. These were actors. And, yeah, shut up. Of course they were actors. <laughs> so, as as I stand there, they start to tell the true story of Breakman Sam. And so I'm standing there, and then Kate is standing there with me, and then slowly we're joined by everybody else who didn't come in, you know, right at the, the start of the thing. And we're standing, listening to the story, and um, the soup, there was soup. They, they passed around soup, we all got to eat soup. And uh, they also <laughs> passed around what Kate tells me was some truly terrible alcohol. Um, but anyway, so they, they finish the story, and then they say, you that way, us this way. And they fade into the darkness as we follow the light out of the Moonville Tunnel. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> You're still not drinking. What? No, dude, I, I'm telling you a thing. It, it, it was incredible. But, but I'll never forget what I saw in the darkness. What, what I saw that nobody else had a chance to see. What do you mean? Uh, Kate. And the way that she, she transformed in my mind into this like terrifying ghoul in the darkness. Did you tell her what you saw? No, no. Uh, there was only one person I could think to tell. The only person who I knew would appreciate it. I keep thinking we could do something like this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, like what we could do is we could, we could rent a house, right? And convert all of the rooms into these pop-up performance spaces. <laughs> And then audiences, they would enter in, uh, in time intervals, right? And they could freely wander the floors and uh, interact with all these audiences. You know, like, like stepping into a dream or a nightmare. You know, a, a totally immersive experience. That's pretty. That's something I've been using over. Is it a story or? That would be up to you. I just mean, did you recently come to some money or something? It doesn't have to be expensive. It was never expensive. It was crap. Oh, come on, man. I just mean stipends, rent, occupancy permit, the fire marshal. We never used to care about any of that stuff. Yeah, paying people. Yeah. You were kids. I know. That's why you wanted to meet me? No. I mean, that, that was... Just... No. Um, I, I wanted to meet with you for a while. Uh, so, you know, I've I've had to deal with some stuff. Prison. It wasn't prison. It Alexa, was define prison. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I've been through some things. We've all been through some things. I, I hear that. Um, I have made mistakes. My life is outside of my control, and there are people I have hurt from whom I would like to ask forgiveness. Now, before you I say anything, know that I am just asking, <laughs> okay, that I in no way expect forgiveness from you or from anyone else. I deeply regret the harm that I may have caused. May I have? <laughs> I was not the friend I could have been. So what? I'm a total jackass. I never committed a crime. I have paid. For my crime. Statutory is also a crime. My relationship with Kate has oh, always bothered I was you. Referring to we Kate. didn't even start having that type of a relationship until she was overseas. Did you throw her a party? Were there really? candles? Did you, Did you buy her a, a car? Decade ago? Look. But I am so proud of you. You are so successful. You've gone farther than I ever even dared to imagine, and it makes me proud to be your friend. But you've got to remember that you were the reason the company fell apart. What? Hmm? No. Come on, man. No. That's... Look, when we started, right? When we started, we were doing such such great work, original work. It wasn't that great. I, we were in our 20s, of course it wasn't all great. Some of it was heavy-handed <laughs> trash. But, but we were doing what nobody in this town was doing. 
putting on original work in, in storefronts and parking garages, in, in bars. We had a company, we had a team, and you were our scribe. We trusted you with that. And then you wrote patterns. Patterns is a good play. Uh-huh. I'm just tired. I was on fellowship. You make it sound premeditated. I was in Odessa on the other side of the we earth. We had the internet. And you wrote a Roman a clay about our company. No one thought that play was about you except Everyone you. Everyone in the company knew that play was supposed to be about me. Best new play of 2015. Broadwayworld.com. Have some dignity. <laughs> <laughs> We've been through this, all of this. Like I come back from the Ukraine, from my fellowship, right? Full of ideas on how we, you, me, us, the company can move forward. And I find you're in the middle of the staging process of a play that is a personal attack on my life. I wrote a play that was about contemporary issues. It had an argument, a theme, a conclusion. You're judging me. I wrote a play, I read about what concerns me in this world. Toxic masculinity, misogyny, child abuse. If you see yourself in that, what am I supposed well, to tell well, you? Alright, stop! Stop for a minute, alright? Look, we were friends. We were friends. Uh, you know about me. You know all about me. So when you include little details about my life in your work, you can't just sit there and say that they weren't intended intended to affect me. Point to the details. I have done things of which I am ashamed. Very ashamed. But we were supposed to be colleagues. You could have talked to me. They wouldn't have the amazing play. Yeah, that amazing play tore our company apart. You tore our company apart. You slept with every woman who worked for us, back of house and front. And you tried to. That's what this is always about with you. It's always been about just jealousy. I am not jealous of a convicted crackhead. supposed to apologize to you? Is that one of the steps? No. No, that is not one of the steps. <sighs> Humility is hard. I feel there is an agenda here, and it's not just about forgiveness. A reconciliation. It's not just about forgiveness. Look, if people knew, knew that you and I were friends again, why should a friendship matter to anyone who isn't part of it? Look, I am literally a new man. Metaphorically, not literally. And if tonight's any indication, not even that. So, so what, we're, we're, we're done? As friends? Is, is that what you're saying? Friendship? is based on trust. And it is apparent that you have reasons not to trust me, and I sure as hell don't trust you. Here's the thing, man. I don't have any friends. And by that I mean I don't trust anyone. I'm the one assigned male at birth. I hate men. My childhood pals cut me off when we were teenagers because they said I was gay. My best friend in high school drifted off from me because he said I was undependable. And then there's you. We went to college together. We started a big company together. And you lied 
and you stole and you hurt people I care about. And through it all, you made me feel like it was me. And I was the reason it all went south. So I've had I am done with friendship. The years go by, I find that I like myself more and more. I'm my best friend, and nothing I do is wrong. I'm awfully fond of me. Yeah, you, you know. The one thing that all of those relationships have in common is you. I've seen that meme. I mean, could it be that your friends didn't think you were gay so much as you're just a precious little snob? Or that you have always been undependable to everyone around you? That it truly is you? Okay. You want forgiveness? Then we should talk exactly about what you need to be forgiven for, because I haven't heard it yet. apologize for the harm I caused you because of my addictions. Because I lied to you about them, and I lied about you to others to cover them up. I took money from the company. I betrayed everyone, you more than most, and I never wanted to do that. I love you. I hurt you take responsibility for the hurt that I caused you, and I am very, very sorry. And I'll do the other thing. Your obsession with that Kate is, is like a sickness, I man. About. I, I, fine, yes, I have known her her entire life. Fine, my sister was her babysitter. Fine, we know this. We did not start having a relationship until she was an adult, a consenting to adult. Look. It was opening night of our company. We had a big party after. Went real late, right at the building. Everyone had gone home except the skeleton crew. Mm -hmm. And I was heading for my car. And I look up, look up and I, I see you, our artistic director, age 25, and our 15-year-old stage manager, Kate. She was leaning on your car, and you were leaning on her. We were having fun. We were drunk. Did I mention she was 15? You know what? Never mind. You two got away with whatever you got away with. I'm happy for you. <laughs> now about the other girl. You are an accused sexual. I was predator. acquitted. You weren't acquitted. The it case was never out. happened. It's like the you weren't allowed to work with children for thirty six months. Yeah, it makes it kind of hard to be a drama. Coach. So the judge knew you were guilty, even if he couldn't prove it. It was my word against hers. Against her, say her name. It was a long time. Not to her. Never to her. Forgiveness for everything. <laughs> Would you forgive me for that? For what? Yeah. 
I can't do that. But she might. I told her I was seeing you tonight. Not. Everyone loves you, you know, despite my best efforts, I guess, and everyone believes you. <laughs> Men must be believed. I guess. And everyone is in your corner, except for the few people you hurt and those that know and care about them, and that bothers you. And you need to get over that. Here's the thing, Brakeman Sam. What? Brakeman Sam? That what? thing you saw. The site specific that pretentious haunted house thing. Yeah. yeah. What? The, what? You wanted to meet me so that we might do something like that? Together? It was very moving. Moving, yeah? Why? I believe because it was about the plight of one solitary individual risking his life for that of another. <laughs> it's what I'm asking you to do, I guess. Okay, yeah, sure. I guess. God, you are such a... See? Mm. That's what you think now. That's the story you tell yourself. That it was relevant, meaningful, or good lord, poignant. When the truth is, you got a charge out of scaring yourself in the dark. You like the thrill of living on the edge. You don't actually care about how it affects others. <laughs> yeah, this coming from a man who uses other people's stories for his own success. I'm a writer. <laughs> the kids playing on the tracks. What happened to them? So you're Brickman Sam, jumping in front of the train. Only the kids were killed. Only no one thought to write a song about them. It's always about you. It's never about the children. I can't forgive you for something that you did to someone else. I can't ask forgiveness for something I haven't done. You can't ask forgiveness for something you lied about in open court. I have to go. Stay, have another drink. I'm good. That's how you do that. That's what they tell me. Got a flat around five in the morning. That sucks. Yeah, first class no. makes the getting there a little less dreadful. Is this a uh, Hollywood thing? It's a Vancouver thing, but yeah. That's exciting. I have been provided with many advantages, and I am very grateful. Who's in it? Ah, I can't say. Uh, NDA and crap. Mm. But there's some folks in it I've really been geeking out over. Mm. You can probably find out about it online. What's it about? What's it about? Young artists with different ideas about what brings happiness and fulfillment. You ever write anything that isn't autobiographical? No. <laughs> What's it called? Patterns.
Forgive me. Thank you. 